What's up guys, it's your boy Jay from JS Films. Even though the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K and the Sony A7S II have the same price of $2995, these two cameras are completely different and I'm going to try to tell you how and why. Now the best way to do this conclusion is just to give you guys the pros and cons between the two cameras that I found. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I have some notes here so please, I'm sorry if I'm looking down a lot but I don't want to forget anything, okay? Sony A7S II. Absolute thing that I loved about this camera is its lightweight and portability. The cameras and the SD cards that come with the Sony A7S II or that require that is required for the Sony A7S II are just really small. SD cards are like that small and the battery is like that small. So portability Sony A7S II. Now, along with the portability and lightweight, you can fly the Sony A7S II with any uh, stabilizer out there. I bought like a $300 Lang P4 stabilizer that I showed you guys in previous videos and I flew that when making that lightsaber duel like for four hours straight without having to put it down because it was so lightweight and I loved it. The Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K can be flown or stabilized with the same stabilizer but there's no way I can do that for the whole day so I actually had to get a vest just to use the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K along with the Lang P4S. So, so that, just keep that in mind if you guys are you know, stabilizing your cameras or that's how you shoot and that's your style. Make sure that you're, you know that the Ursa Mini 4K is going to be heavier. The next thing I liked about the Sony A7S II is the 5-axis stabilization. Now, for me, I don't necessarily use it, but I know a lot of people are excited about it. And yeah, it, it works okay. You can handhold uh, your camera and you can get some pretty smooth shots. But the thing that I kind of found annoying about it was when I have that option on and I would put it on a tripod, and press record and I will just forget to turn it off, you will actually see like micro jitters because the camera or the stabilization thinks that the camera is moving. And that's probably just dumb, uh, like being dumb on my part because I forget to turn it off. But just keep that in mind as well. But the stabilizer is a pretty cool deal. Now another pro for the Sony A7S II is it's just much cheaper in my opinion. Much cheaper to the point that the SD cards that you will need to have the camera running is maybe like you can get for a 256GB SDXC card, you can get for $170 or so depending on the brand. But with the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K, a 256GB CFast 2.0 card is like $600 to $700. And I know the price will go down later on, but for now, it's like four times more as far as media. So Sony 7S II is a little bit cheaper. Another reason why it's cheaper is the battery. To power your camera with the Sony 7S II, you just buy the little batteries with it, which is much cheaper and much smaller. The Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K, you're gonna have to buy the battery plate because it doesn't come with it. And you're gonna have to buy the actual battery that you'll need, like a V-mount or Anton Bauer, whatever plate you have. So that's just more cost. So I give uh, cheaper the Sony A7S II. Okay, so the pros for the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K is 12-bit depth RAW versus the Sony A7S II's 8-bit depth XAVC-D codec, which I think the Sony camcorders right now, even like the FS5 or the higher-ups, they're struggling with that codec because it's 8-bit. Now, you can use an external recorder to use with the Sony A7S II, but I'm pretty sure it still records 8-bit depth. It might be a 422, but it's still 8-bit. Just make sure you look into that if you're committed to buy the Sony A7S II and have an external like, recorder because it's still 8-bit. Okay, so another good thing about the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K is its capabilities to shoot 4K at 60 frames per second. The Sony A7S II does not shoot at 4K at 60 frames per second. Not right now, maybe in the future. Okay, so another thing that I liked about the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K is it comes with the Vinci Resolve Studio 12, which I actually just sold for $300. So if you want some extra cash and you don't need the Vinci Resolve, then there you go. It's a pretty cool thing. Speaking about the Vinci Resolve 12, Sony A7S II audio is not supported with the DaVinci Resolve 12 as of today still. So if you have a Sony A7S II and you use DaVinci Resolve 12 as your NLE or your color grading suite, you're not going to get audio. There is a workaround that you can do, but come on, why can't we just copy and paste and just drag and drop right? The Vinci Resolve does not support Sony A7S II audio. I did not know that until I got the camera, so please keep that in mind. Another pro for the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K is its built-in 5-inch touch screen. And I actually had a question about this. How do they compare as far as menus? Uh, which one's better? I 
I think I'm gonna give it to the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K because it is touchscreen and I can freaking just, you know, touch of a button, I can change my settings. The Sony A7S II, you might wanna look it up and I'm sorry I didn't do it because I didn't really think about it. Somebody just asked me really, but Sony A7S II's menu, I think there's like nine pages and the LCD on the back is not touch screen. So you're gonna have to um, use the thumb wheel to actually scroll through the options. And I think there's nine pages and then more within that. So I want you to see the hierarchy for the Sony A7S II menu options. But pros for Blackmagic or Mini 4K, built-in LCD. You don't have to get an external LCD if you don't want to because it has a focus peaking already. It has a histogram. It has everything you need in there and it is touch screen. The only thing I didn't like about the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K uh, built-in touchscreen is you can't rotate it 360. Like, I can't see myself right now if I wanted to. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna talk about is global shutter. Now, I've never shot anything with global shutter before, so having global shutter was a pretty cool thing for me because I do a lot of fast pans and tilts and stuff like that. So when I tested it out, it actually blew my mind. I didn't think it was gonna make that much of a difference, but it actually does. And that's a pretty cool feature that I really like about the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K. Now, that's all I got for you guys today. If you have any questions, let me know. I actually have one of these cameras boxed up and ready to go. Let me see if you can guess which ones I'm keeping. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, so if you still haven't or still cannot make up your mind about the two cameras, I created a very complex matrix to maybe help you guys out by just asking simple questions. Ask yourself these simple questions, and we're going to go, we're gonna go over it real quick, okay? So I have here Sony versus the Ursa. So the first question you need to ask yourself is size and portability. How important is the size of the camera for you? If, if it needs to be small, then obviously check uh, the Sony. So let's put a check mark there. But if you don't care about the size at all, then don't put any check marks at all, okay? But let's just say I care about the size of the camera. I'm gonna put a check mark on Sony because it is uh, smaller. Stabilizing wise, how am I gonna stabilize my camera? Am I gonna use a DJI Ronin or a stabilizer with a vest? Or can I just use a Ronin M or something smaller? Depending on your answer here, just pick which one uh, you use for stabilizing your camera. So let's say, you know what? I actually, uh, I have a DJI Ronin. So I can do DJI Ronin. I can afford that or whatever. So let's put a check mar mark on Ursa. And this is just for me, okay? Let's just say this is me right now. And just follow along and answer the same questions that I'm asking here. Third question is the cost to get it running. Do you really care about how much it costs to get the camera running? For Sony A7S II, it's a little bit cheaper because of the battery options and the media options. For the Ursa Mini 4K, like I said, the media costs a lot more for now. It will go down in price later on, but to get the camera running, you will need a little bit more. So if you care about the cost of the camera to, get, to just get it running, put a check mark on which option. If you want it cheaper, check mark Sony. If you don't care, don't put any check marks at all. The fourth option, or the fourth question is low light. Okay, and this is the number one question that I ask. Do I really need the low light capability? Do I really need to be able to see in the dark and pitch black lighting and videotape somebody in just very, very dark lighting? Ask yourself this question. If yes, then obviously check Sony. If not, then don't check anything at all. So for me, I don't need low light. Okay, so I did not check. Next thing I'm going to ask is the five axis stabilization. Is five axis stabilization really that important to me? For me, it's not. So what I'm going to do is just not check anything at all. I'm going to leave it as is because I don't care if it has five axis or no five axis stabilization at all. So the next question is full frame versus super 35 millimeter. Do I really need to get a full frame camera or can I use a 1.4 crop camera? For me, it doesn't matter if it's a full frame or 1.4 crop, so I'm not gonna put any check marks at all. The next thing, and these are the pros for the Sony so far. These are the pros for the Ursa now. Do I really need raw 12 bit or can I deal with 8 bit 422? For my case, yes, I would like to have the 12 uh, bit raw because I love raw. It's just, if you never used raw before, 
you're definitely missing out but for me raw 12 bit is a must because a i love changing my color temperature like after the fact like, you know you you know what i'm talking about if you shot raw before you can change the color temperature but anyway next question bit rate sony 4k is it is 100 megabits per second okay with you or do you want the ursa mini's raw plus prores options like I said in my previous videos, the Sony 4K is only 100 megabits per second. This is very, very minimal for uh, 4K videos. If I don't care about the bit rate, I'm not going to check anything, but I do want the RAW and the ProRes options to give me more um, options to shoot with. Okay, So I'm going to check Ursa because the Ursa has those options. Next thing, 4K 60 frames per second. Do I absolutely want and need 4K 60 frames per second? No, not really. I do not shoot a lot of 60 frames per second movies. Not at all. So I'm not going to check anything in my, uh, in my complex matrix here. No check. Next thing, global shutter. Do I absolutely need global shutter to make movies? No, not necessarily. I don't need global shutter. It's just a plus. But I'm... I don't really care about it. Built-in LCD is the next question. Do I really need a built-in LCD? Now this is a tough question because even though I can say I don't need a built-in uh, built LCD, I'm probably going to end up buying an LCD if I was to get the Sony a7S II because the Sony a7S II's screen is really small. So I think I would prefer a built-in LCD because a, it's free, and it's already there. It's 5-inch, and it is touchscreen. Next and last question. The audio. Do you need professional XLR ports with phantom power when you're making movies? If you don't care, you don't need it, then don't put any check marks. If you do need it, then put a check mark on the Ursa because the Sony A7S II does not have professional XLR ports with phantom power. And after answering all these questions, you will obviously come out with something like this. And basically all you have to do now is just see how many check marks you have for each camera. Obviously for me, it's the Ursa Mini. If you have more check marks for the Sony A7S II, then go ahead and buy the Sony A7S II because that's what, uh, that's what you need according to this complex matrix. Hopefully that helped you guys out a little bit more.